very much. We've got to <laughs> next Emma Marston from the University of New York, um, and we'll be looking at uh, an online resource for doing research instead of um, the results of this. <laughs> so, it's a good connection between the two of us. Yeah, so. I'm already thinking of doing it by yourself. And vice versa. Yeah. So, um, thank you very much for coming. Uh, the, I'd like to start the presentation with a few slides about the background to IRIS, about what it actually is. And then I'm hoping to spend about 10 minutes just doing some live searches. Um, so if you bear with me, it takes, obviously takes a few seconds to download things. Um, so, first of all, <coughs> the background to IRIS, what is it? So, IRIS stands for Instrument for Research into Second Language Learning and Teaching. And there's the website, so it's a, a large funded project by the, uh, funded by the ESRC and British uh, Academy. So it's a, a central digital repository uh, to which you can upload and download materials and it's freely accessible. The repository is searchable across a range of parameters, which I'm going to demonstrate later. Um, including the kind of research area that you want to look into, the instrument type, the participant characteristics, what language they're learning, etc. So the, uh, one of the sort of strengths of IRIS is that it is independent. It's um, across institution, across country, across journals and publishers and funders. So those things are searchable within the database. So data collection materials are held regardless of who funded the research, or where it was done, or who published the research. So it's a central repository bringing all these things together. Um, it's using the infrastructure of the University of York's digital library, so it's sustainable for that reason. They'll hold it as an archive, and the British Academy is providing funding for it to grow. So. Um, what does it actually hold? It, it's um, hold research uh, data collection materials across the whole remit of second language learning and teaching research. So obviously that's a huge field, including L2 production, language learning. It's all done with diver in diverse contexts, with very diverse aim uh, research aims, and all sorts of different kinds of data are collected using the materials held on IRIS. So why did we think that IRIS needed developing? Currently, researchers create their own instruments, generally, and they keep their own instruments. So a great deal of reinvention of the wheel is going on, and agenda, research agendas could be more systematic over time and over space. So between different countries and people, research students, early career researchers, experienced researchers are doing very similar research, but they use slightly different instruments, slightly different tools for collecting their data. This then makes the research very diff difficult to compare in different contexts. Um, getting hold of these instruments is ad hoc. Um, it depends whether the researcher stays at the same institution, whether they keep the same email address, hopefully they don't die. Um, the needs, um, you know, the community needed some um, collective memory. The descriptions that you find in published work are usually very short, and the examples that you see in appendices are very short. So there's a big contrast between the complete data collection instrument, which really lets students see and you know, what how the researcher has gone about collecting the data what actually the research was like. The actual data collection instrument is the bit usually where you think, ah, that's what they did, that's what this research is about. And there's a difference between that and actually what you read in the research in the journal article mm -hmm. or the chapter. So submission is online. Submission of data collection materials is online. You can do it yourself. Or you can email the files to Iris. Or you can actually post them. Some people have been posting paper and tapes and we've been digitising them. Um, to get uploaded, um, the criteria for upload is that the instrument, the data collection materials, must have been used to collect data that has been published in a peer-reviewed journal article book or conference proceedings or approved PhD thesis. 
So we ourselves are not acting as quality assurers. We are using the kind of the gatekeeping mechanisms that are already in place in the community. We're not a new way of judging or evaluating the quality of research. That's already been done. We're uh, posting, holding the data collection instruments for people to reuse and adapt as they see fit for their own purpose. So the, the repository went live August last year and we've had about 900 downloads so far and about 4,500 visits to the site. We've collected about 150 data collection instruments. And you'll see what an instrument is in a minute, um, but it can be multiple files. So one instrument could be a sound file and a transcript that go together, or pictures and written stimuli that go together. So on the website, you will be able to see that um, if you download some research instruments, or say you download a questionnaire, um, and then the IRIS offers some kind of interaction between the people that download the instrument and the people that uploaded the instrument, because of course if you contribute an instrument, you kind of want to know what people are doing with it. Um, so you can, um, downloaders are encouraged to leave feedback about how they use the instrument, any problems they've found, and any updated statistics that they come across or that they have. We do check this so that it's not, there's no spam going onto the website or no abuse of comments, of course, it's very likely that there will be, but that we do actually read any, any feedback that's left before we post it live. Um, the <coughs> uploader is in, so the contributor of material is encouraged to allow these public comments. Um, but they can opt out of them if they wish. They can say, I'd like the comments sent to me directly, or they can say, no, I don't want any feedback. And the uploader, so if you contribute instruments, you do get, an, you can request an alert every time your instrument is downloaded. So if you do manage to upload some data collection materials, when anyone else in the world downloads it, you do get a nice little email popping in saying, someone's downloaded your work. Um, which is quite nice. Of course, it's got its downside. Who? Who was it? What have they done with it? <laughs> um, and we, in those situations, if you're desperate to find out, we can kind of broker. Um, we can ask the person that downloaded. We hold both sets of information usually, so we can ask that person if they want to be contacted. We've done that in one situation where someone wanted to find out, and then it may begin a few collaborations. So, the idea of IRIS is that it improves transparency, it, it allows us to evaluate research materials, and eventually, eventually, over the years, it will help to enhance the quality of research data collection materials as our ideas become more refined about what a good questionnaire about motivation should look like. So, the ethical issues, copyright and um, intellectual property, we're using Creative Commons licensing, and we the default option that people click when they upload materials is that you allow derivatives, non-commercial, and it's share alike. So people pass on that license to the next people. Um, we promote an awareness to people that are uploading instruments that in some cases they have used someone else's work to develop that instrument. So research is obviously cyclical, so you build on someone else's questionnaire, and we encourage obviously give them lots of opportunities to acknowledge previous versions and that you can see that on the website. We, the IRIS team can help to pursue permission requests. So some people say use a few photos from a textbook or something to create a research instrument or they use someone else's work or they use um, a test from a textbook and if they're at all worried that they haven't got permission to use those they can let us know and we'll pursue those permission requests for them. Um, but of course, at the end of the day, we have some little terms and conditions that says the acknowledgements for other people's work is the uploader's responsibility. So we have um, a lot of support from potential users in the research and teaching community. Um, and we have a, an international advisory board. So this is, a, just, this is a, a sustainable, large international project that we really help, hope will grow in the community when, um, over the next few years. So, I've got some examples of um, 
instruments that have been downloaded and the kinds of studies that they were used in. But I think actually, rather than look at those, this is the kind of instrument that you can download and you'll see the research, the reference for it. But rather than have a look at that, let's look at the actual website. So this is the um, home page. Um, you can uh, submit materials here, obviously, um, and search and download here. <coughs> um, there is a way that you could just see everything on IRIS, um, rather than searching for specific terms. Um, let's do that first. Let's just see what's in IRIS. And then let's, we can refine the search using these uh, filters down the left hand side. So each data collection material has got lots of tags um, attached to it, um, including what type of data collection material it is, um, the author, the publications that are linked to that data collection material, um, general research area, what linguistic feature, um, <coughs> this obviously doesn't apply to all the research, lots of research is about motivation and identity and so this is just for those that are interested in actual um, language or language learning. Um, so we could filter for, let's filter for the advanced learner, imagine you want to see what kind of research materials are up there for researching advanced learners. So there are 28 data collection materials that someone, that people have actually tagged with advanced. There'll probably be more up there that have been used with advanced learners or could be used with advanced learners, but these are the ones that researchers have actually bothered to tag with advanced learner. Um, you can upload materials and just simply fill in eight obligatory fields, but um, some people are a lot keener and put a lot of labels attached to their, their instruments. Um, so we could have a look. At the uh, Study Abroad Questionnaire by Jim Coleman. So you can see you get a page first of all with a bit more information so that you don't have to download it straight away. You get the references for publications. So this is where maybe if they're open access journals, we could link straight to them. Mm -hmm. um, but at the moment, you would then have to go and find the actual original research article. In the long term, maybe in a few years, we'll find links to the journal articles. But the same problem that John just been, some of them will be free, so you'll be able to go straight to the open access actual original research article, but some of them um, you would then come up against the same barriers institute, you know, not having an institutional library card or so we would eventually like to link to the articles and then there's the type of file and some people fill in details about the participant types. So you can find out quite a lot about how that instrument has already been used by the person that uploaded it. And if they did write any of the in the previous version. So if we wanted to, we could leave feedback at this point. We wouldn't, so we've downloaded it. Then, for our purposes, we'd just like to know who is downloading materials. You don't have to fill this out. You can ask to be not, not, not contacted. But um, if you give your email address, in about six months or a year, you'll get automatically emailed by Iris just say, did you use the instrument? Tick yes or no. Did you then build on it? Did you use it in research or did you just take a look at it? Um, and that way we can see how the research um, how Iris is being used to help research or research gender. So we also like to know what kind of um, person is downloading. Is it researchers? Is it mainly students?
questionnaire in full um, and obviously researchers will want to tweak this to their own context so they may not be using um, people studying French they may not be using people that have gone to Senegal for their year abroad but by using this questionnaire but changing it to those that have gone to Ecuador for their year abroad we can then begin to <coughs> compare the results of this, exactly this questionnaire, with um, a new context. <coughs> so this was obviously asking quite a lot of um, personal, cultural questions. It wasn't um, a linguistic focus study. I wanted to just demonstrate a range of different types of materials that are up there. So I'll find something um, for those interested in French. <coughs> so there are 42 instruments that are, inter that, um, are that have been reported or tagged as being relevant for French, but of course you might download German materials and change, change the language and, and research French learners. Um, let's look at Kevin's as he's here. <laughs> so I think this is from Kevin's PhD thesis, Kevin McManus, um, who was looking at um, tense and aspect in French amongst university level learners and created a grammaticality judgment test to find out whether, how, how well they accepted um, sentences when they were in, in different, uh, whether, whether they were in imperfect or rhetoric.
People provide everything. So the whole, the whole, I mean, this would never appear in a journal article or a book type of chapter, but this is actually how it was done in, in real life. And these resources are really valuable in terms of time saving, not reinventing the wheel, knowing exactly the amount of space that participants had to, I mean, but oversell just a blank piece of paper, but um, This is, we've only really been live for about five months as well, so this, you know, it'd be fantastic if more people did code their stuff with computers and language learning. And a lot of the things that are on there are adaptable and reusable. Yeah. We've done that thing again. Go on, let me, yeah. I was just going to say, I don't know if we're taking questions, but, um, yeah. It's a great project, it's a great, a great idea, but how are you going to get people to populate it? I mean, I know you're at workshops. And conferences. Um, have well, we already this? have over 150 objects up there, yeah. and there's been 900 downloads, and that's just in the first five months. Yeah. So it is a slow process, um, but we've had, I think, a great response so far. We've got lots of pledges as well. Actually, people are really, really positive about the idea, and of course, it always comes down to, well, actually, it's on that other machine, or it's on that other disc, and I or it's, uh, it's in paper format, and I can't find it. So it, it takes people about, it, it can take some time to actually get hold of the instrument. The actual uploading isn't a problem, that takes about 20 minutes, 15 minutes. Um, one thing that we're going to ask journal editors, and we've already got quite a lot of support for this, um, at, at the American Association of Applied Linguistics in March, we're going to put a proposal to the journal editors mm -hmm. to write in their notes for authors to say, if you want to publish in this journal, we strongly encourage you to upload your research data collection instruments to IRIS. So that way, that would get, you know, from now onwards, then it would get no good. I mean, it wouldn't, I don't think journal editors would ever oblige people to do it that they could strongly recommend. Just like they strongly recommend people to write effect sizes in their, in their journal articles. Mm -hmm. um, and then apart from that, it's just serious networking and asking, and, and asking people to do it. Um, we've also, we as part of the project, we've been writing to authors of um, journal articles over the last five years and asking them. Mm -hmm. And there's positive responses, it's just them getting them to do it. We've also got lots of incentives, like at Confer 3 international conferences, <coughs> if you register, if you um, upload an instrument to IRIS during the period of registration to your Ross with Slur for TBLT, then you get a reduction on your conference fees. Um, so we've got lots of ways of doing it. But I think it will be a snowball effect, I think, once you know, once it becomes a common practice to expect things to be up there on IRIS then. And the other thing is that when students or early career researchers email more experienced researchers and say, um, can, I, can I have your questionnaire that you used or can I have your stimuli that you used for such and such a study, it would be great if either the researcher or the student then lets us know because it's actually a lot easier for researchers to say, just go to IRIS and get it. So the more experienced researchers have got an incentive to upload their stuff here, rather than emailing it, just send it to us, we'll upload it, and then you'll never have to send it to anyone again. <laughs> Did you 
Yeah, or we carry on searching for or yeah. I have a question. If I'm rather similar, like um, Cyrus or something or Mentina or something called Mentally. So in the data collection instruments. Um, I there, use there's a lot of things with data, but the only other data collection instrument thing that I've heard of is run by the American, the APA, American Psychological Association, and they, just at the time that we got this funding, they started a, um, a similar repository, but for, um, you know, the test of psychology is very uh, normalised, standardised test, um, and so psych psycho psychological tests for diagnosing clinical use and things. So, um, but it's not like ours because our, our research field is much more ad hoc. You know, we use these pictures and got learners to talk. So that's the only other data collection material. Well, then, then I don't know. Then I'm not, I'm not sure. Name. Then, what was, sorry, uh, one is S C I R U S. Mentalist doesn't connect research. It's a way of populating your own personal library with PDFs. Yeah. Yeah. Does it have so, to do with data collection? Yeah. Just All right. So it's, it's, it's mostly reference. <coughs> right. Okay. Okay. Yeah. 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 I mean, one of the major um, reasons for doing this is that I think as a field, we're quite good at sharing. There's the White Rose um, collection. We're quite good at sharing the research outputs. I agree it's not open access, and that could be better. We're quite good at sharing data, because ESRC have got their data archive. And it was the Splock and Flock projects here that gave me kind of the idea for, well, it's the instruments that we're actually using to collect that data, and then someone else can go and collect their own data with their learners in their context. Um, so, Again, that's a data project, there's lots of corporate projects in our field, but the actual raw materials used for collecting data. I think this is such an incredible and amazing uh, effort. I wish I, I knew about it before designing my question yeah, three years ago. Uh, I'm wondering, you mentioned that you didn't, you, you didn't accept any, any paper or any, let's say, any instrument unless it's has already been approved by, uh, uh, let's say, by, by, by another body like a journal or... Yeah. Do you do any filtering for this one, for, for this action? A PH, we accept PH, anything that's been used to collect data for an approved PhD thesis, we accept. But we don't <coughs> check whether it really is an approved PhD thesis. Okay. No. Mm -hmm. But really the risks are very, very low that anyone would to pretend that they're instrumental mm -hmm. <laughs> No, I mean, just, uh, I mean, uh, some people might upload their work without having them uh, accredited or, yeah, uh, yeah. let's say, uh, edited by, by another body. Yeah, yeah. Party, that's what I mean. <clears throat> so it could be that someone's makes up a reference for a conference proceedings or makes up a reference for a journal article and it, and it didn't really exist. Mm -hmm. um, but, yeah. but also, if we have a takedown policy, so we consulted legal people that um, said you need a takedown policy, so if there's ever a complaint about one of the instruments on there, we would then investigate it. Mm -hmm. um, and we've got a disclosure thing that says that we're not responsible for the for any instrument that say is being copied from someone else or something. But um, no we, we we're not we're not vetting it um, in it we're not checking whether they've been but again this should actually help it was one of the reasons for developing it is that it will help um, improve the quality of, say a questionnaire is used over and over again and people actually begin to say, well actually this questionnaire isn't very good, eventually it should stop the use of that questionnaire or help people adapt it and evaluate it more openly and transparently. Just a quick question. So you mentioned APA, I've got something similar. Do you know of a field, another field, 
apart from our own, that does this very well. No. Okay. No. So that's it, really a breakthrough, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. And it's great. I think it's exactly really exciting. Really <laughs> yeah. There's, there's, I work in an education department at York, and the science education <coughs> people um, also like the idea of currently yeah. putting in proposals to do a similar thing in science education. Um, yeah, it should, and I'm hoping that psycholinguists mm -hmm. and social, you know, sort of within our field, I hope it broadens out. Mm -hmm. And there's someone at Essex actually that was interested in the first language acquisition doing it for, um, and it should, yeah, hopefully it will spread, but it will be a long process. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Good luck, that's very good. So if you can, please, I have, we have flyers up in your, if you want to email me, I can send you some flyers that you can then spread around and help to spread the word. Please use it, download from it, and um, as and when you have instruments that have been used for um, peer-reviewed or an approved PhD thesis, please, please upload them in. It does increase the visibility of your work a lot. Um, and people will reuse your material. And they cite you, just as they would. I mean, we're generally an honest bunch of people, I think. <laughs> and, we, and we would cite, uh, you would get cited. Um, uh, the IRIS website doesn't get cited. That's nothing to do with it. It's your work that would get cited. Your PhD. Excuse me, would you please show your contact again? Because, uh, sorry, uh, sorry. Yeah. <coughs> I should show... Um, so I'll just say thank you to the Irish team <coughs> in York. Um, so the Irish email is um, there. So that's the Irish website. And my personal email is just emma, emma dot marsden at york dot mm -hmm. Emma Marsden, York, will find it. Um, there are another a few things called Iris, so just Googling Iris at the moment doesn't get us there. <laughs> we need, we, there are certain techniques out there to get you higher up the Google thing, but we haven't mastered that yet. I think you have to put a combination of Iris, York, and Marsden, and then it's number one on the Google. <laughs> 